Are you struggling with getting more customers or growing your business? Well, this is the video for you. Today, we're gonna to be going through the latest marketing tactics that you can use to grow your business, regardless of your B2B or B2C. These are current strategies that you can use to increase your revenue and take your company to the next level. Okay, so this video is gonna be extremely valuable to you. You can think you have the best business in the world, the best product, the best customers, but if you do not have an effective marketing strategy that cuts through the noise in this digital marketing space, then you're simply not gonna be able to scale and you're not gonna be able to get your business to the level you want to get it to. So let's get straight into this. No fluff, no noise, just pure value. These are the top five marketing strategies that you need to implement in your business right now, regardless of your size or your niche, in no particular order. Number one is paid advertising. And this is a strategy I recommend to absolutely all businesses. If you've never watched my videos before, then my name is Jordan Platten. I own Affluent.co. We're a multi-service digital marketing company here in the UK. And our core service is offering Facebook ads, paid Facebook ads to companies in order to explode their sales online. And we've literally generated millions and millions in new revenue for companies all over the globe thousands of different product ranges. So we truly know this works. I'll see if I can throw up some screenshots around me as I'm talking. So what actually is paid advertising? Paid advertising is any kind of advertising you have to pay for, but I'm specifically talking about social media and Google ads here. So when we're scrolling through on these feed on our favorite social media platform, and we see that sponsored tag, and we see a company offering a product or service that they want to offer us that's targeted to us, that is a paid ad. That company have paid for that slot and they have targeted you as their ideal customer. You can literally get yourselves in front of anybody you want to get yourself in front of on social media. You can target women aged 35 who live on a certain street in London, like red jumpers and own a dog. It is that targeted. And it makes sense for us to get ourselves on these platforms because we are in a world now addicted to social media and mobile phones. You only have to scroll down the feed to see everybody walking and swiping. And so if you are not getting yourselves in the hands of your customers exactly where they are every single day, then you are simply leaving money on the table. Now, there are multiple forms of paid advertising online. We have cost per click, CPC advertising, which is like Google ads. We then have cost per impression, which is like how Facebook and Instagram works. We pay to reach a certain amount of people. That's usually a, what's called a CPM, which is cost to reach a thousand people. And then finally, we have display ads. They're the banners and everything that you see when you're scrolling through the internet or probably the sponsored video you saw before watching this one right now on YouTube. Now, the most popular advertising platforms at the moment are Facebook and Google. And they work in very, very different ways. When you are advertising on Google, you are trying to hit people based on the keywords that they're searching. So essentially, your customers are already looking for your product or service, and you're putting yourself in front of them. You're getting to the top of that newsfeed, so they are seeing you before they see one of your competitors. So they're already slightly warm before they reach your website. And this is very effective for any kind of business that has a keyword rich company, something, a product or service that people are searching for regularly. Now, Facebook on the other side is a advertising platform where we are putting ourselves in front of our potential customer. This is interruption marketing. We are getting on that newsfeed and we are saying, hey, you need our product or service and this is why you need it. This is very effective for new start businesses, companies who have a large budget and good content that they can use because content is king on Facebook. We want good imagery and good videos that we can use to grab our potential customer's attention. Now, if you don't have a very large budget, the absolute minimum you should be doing is retargeting on Facebook. And retargeting is exactly exactly what it sounds like. On Facebook, we can retarget our existing pool of potential customers. We all have social media, we all have websites, at least you absolutely should be if you're watching this video. And on that website, on that social media platform, we are getting traffic. We are getting people looking at our photos, liking our photos, commenting, just visiting us, following us, visiting our website pages, looking at our products. That is all traffic that we should be retargeting with a single ad and an offer for a product so that person can be converted from somebody who's just spectating to somebody who is gonna become a customer. So as a minimum, go and research. In fact, there's a video on this uh, on my channel. Click the link after this, by the way, and learn how to launch your first Facebook ad. You can literally watch that video and it will teach you exactly what you need to do to launch your first ever Facebook ad. Launch a retargeting ad for all of your existing web traffic, all of your existing social media following, and set a $10 or £10 a day budget on that to start off with. I guarantee you're gonna get some pretty good results straight away. 
Number two, utilize new social media apps. Now in the world of social media, there are always new companies coming up and trying to compete with the big players, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And over the last couple of years, we've seen two massive platforms actually stick. That one of them is TikTok. And I know what you're thinking, TikTok, that's not for me. That's kids dancing, doing silly videos online. And that simply isn't true in all cases in business. Your business, without realizing, may be a business that you can create content for and get serious, serious levels of exposure. Here's an example. This is a clothing company. And on this video specifically, they have 1.5 million views and over 80,000 followers to their page. They are generating monumental amounts of sales from this TikTok page because they're gaining huge interest and virality across the content that they are posting. Now, this is very, very simple content. This is taking them more than 15 minutes per day, right? And if you have the capacity to create content and it could be relevant to a TikTok-based audience, you absolutely should use it because the algorithm at the moment is still ridiculous and you can get huge amounts of exposure with very little work at all. Now, another platform that has really kicked off recently is Clubhouse. If you are a thought leader in your industry, you absolutely should be trying to be one. Everybody who is working in any industry should be trying to become a thought leader because when we have authority, we have the ability to sell easier because we gain more trust to our customers. Now, if you are interested in doing that, Clubhouse is a great place to do it because we can join private rooms with a ton of our potential customers and also other industry leaders in our niche. And we can talk about our products or services, maybe not shamelessly plugging them, but talking about the benefits of what it is that we do as a business and educating people within your space. When we build authority, we build trust. They come over to our page and they buy our products or services. If you get into a really big room, a really big group, you can make a serious amount of sales on the platform. And I've known people who have literally gained hundreds of thousand followers on the platform in literally a couple of weeks. Again, the algorithm is ridiculous right now. So keep an eye out for all of the latest platforms and don't be afraid to jump into something new. It's when it's new that we need to jump into it the quickest, right? Because that's when the algorithm is at its hottest and that is when we can make the biggest returns from it. Number three is email marketing. And I know what you may be thinking, Jordan, I thought this is meant to be current strategies. Now, if you think that people's attention is more on social media and they are not using email anymore and it's an ineffective marketing strategy, you're wrong. And it's simply not the case. Emails come full circle. In 2019, global email users amounted to 3.9 billion active users. And in 2023, that's expected to grow to 4.3 billion users. That's half the world's population. And that's not something to be ignored. If you're doing business in the developed world, your customers are using email and you have no excuse not to get yourselves in front of them 24 hours a day, 365 days a week. Now, if your excuse is, I cannot do it, I don't know how to do it, I don't know the tools, I literally teach people this stuff for free. Again, there's a link around here right now on how you can use Active Campaign, a software to smash out email blasts to your customer list. You can start building a database that you can remarket. This is completely for free. There's no excuse for not to be doing this. Email marketing is a highly effective way for us to nurture our customers. Some businesses have customers that have a longer buying process. We need to warm them up and build trust before they want to buy from us. We can get them enrolled into a newsletter, incentivize that newsletter, and send them out weekly value or daily value if you've got time about our product or service or our industry and the benefits of what it is we have to offer for them, build enough trust for them to buy our product and become a customer. We can then use email marketing to remarket those existing customers with new promotions and offers. When we have them, we can literally get ourselves in the hands of them very, very easily. And the benefit for them is they can read the emails whenever they want to at their own time convenience. Now, these emails don't need to be complicated. The best copywriting style is a human casual style. Speak to your customers in the way you would want to be spoken to if you were them. Build a relationship with them and give them an offer that they cannot refuse so you can increase your close rate via email. So go build an email strategy. Number four is search engine optimization or SEO. Now, SEO is the process of increasing your traffic to a specific website through search engines such as Google, Bing, and Yahoo. We wanna get ourselves to the top of that list on the first page of Google, the holy grail. But if we can get in the top three, then we really are doing something right. Now, a common misconception about SEO is it's a standalone strategy that just consists of making sure your website has a lot of keywords on it. Now, that simply isn't true, but SEO is central to a successful inbound marketing strategy. 
It's extremely effective because it continues to evolve as the internet and search engines do. We can get ourselves in front of our customers very easily and quickly when they just search us on a search engine. And because of that, it's very cost effective as well because we're not paying to get ourselves on top of the feed because we have the organic stuff nailed down. Now, if you're in a business to business industry, SEO is still the most effective way for you to generate leads with 14% of all B2B leads being generated through organic search, closely followed by email marketing at 13% and social media at 12%. So if you're in B2B, you really need to be focusing on SEO. Now, as I said, it's not just about keywords on your website, although that's a huge part of it. We want to be conscious when we're creating our website pages that we have high quality content. Our images aren't too large. We don't have pixelated bad quality pages and we're making sure that all of our written content is as keyword rich as possible, but it also needs to read well, okay? It doesn't need to be like the tags on a YouTube video. Now, we can do a number of other things to increase our overall SEO weight. Uh, we can make sure our social media is equally as SEO rich. We have social media pages across as many channels as we are actively using. We can launch a blog on our website, and that's probably the most effective way to start getting ourselves out there more. If you launch a blog talking about relevant things going on in your industry, you start educating people on your your products or your services as well. That's going to be a great way for us to start ranking on Google and for Google to recognize us as a more established company so we can get ourselves at the top of the feed. It only took us two weeks to get ourselves at the top of the feed for the Affluent Agency and the Affluent Academy and our brand new ad ads education business, learnads.io. Now, we are number one on Google for Learn Ads and we ranked above Google themselves with their own training platform and the Facebook blueprint as well. Now, that's Pretty good, if I say so myself. And we achieved that through regular blogs, through getting ourselves all over social media and making sure we could generate as much traffic to those pages as possible through paid ads as well. Now, we achieved that by making sure our website was high quality. We hired a very good web development agency, so the code is nice and simple. It's clean, there's no mess. It's very keyword rich. And we shared the website across all of our social media channels and started posting on them as soon as we possibly could. So we nested ourselves in the Google alg algorithm very, very quickly. We started gaining traffic on that page when we hit first page, and now, we are right at the top of the search results. And once you're there, it's relatively easy to maintain unless somebody's working harder than you are at their SEO. So start thinking about SEO. How can you use what you already have? How can you improve what you've already got to make sure you rank higher on organic search? Now, finally, number five is earned media and PR. Now, earned media is essentially free advertising online. It's media that we have earned through our customers or through press releases through various media channels. And there are a few ways that we can tackle this, but it's very important that every single company is using some kind of earned media strategy. The easiest way is through customer testimonials and reviews. Make sure you are asking every single review, every single customer that you have to leave you a review if they are satisfied of your product or service, and not just on somewhere like Trustpilot, but on Facebook, on your various social media channels as well, because you want to make sure we have omnipresence when it comes to good reviews with all of our customers. So we have Trustpilot, Google Reviews, and Facebook. They're great places for you to begin. When we have reviews, our customers become our sales team. They start selling our products for them. And if every single customer we had told five people about our product or service, we'd scale up pretty quickly. The next thing we can ask them for is testimonials. And we can integrate this with a email marketing campaign. Send an email out one week after our customers receive a product. Ask for a review on the various platforms. Send them a link and ask for a testimonial. If we can get a video testimonial, we can use that video for a Facebook ad or a YouTube ad. We can use it for content organically on our social media. And this is how you create a overarching marketing strategy, which is symbiotic. Everything starts working together. Everything starts complementing itself. And that is the secret to success in digital marketing in 2021. We need to gain omnipresence and use a whole bunch of different strategies. Now, on the end media thing as well, we can reach out to podcasts. We can feature on theirs. We can feature them on our podcast. We can go on YouTube channels. We can have people on our YouTube channel. We can gain access to the clout that they have in our industry. We can try and earn free PR, okay? So we can reach out to editors for local or international publications which are relevant to our industry. We can teach people about our products or services, educate them on things that we're doing in the industry. There are so many different avenues that we can go down to earn free or earned media and PR. And we need to be utilizing that because it doesn't cost us anything. 
So guys, if you made it to the end of this video, you've got a lot to get yourself stuck into. Now I'd advise you picking one thing from the video, mastering that first of all, implementing that into your business, and then expanding out into the other strategies that we've gone through today. Now I know I've given you a couple of videos for reference to move on to after this one, but if you're interested in looking into some further trends and future trends for digital marketing things, I think you should have a look into for the future. Then we do have a video about future trends in digital marketing as well, um, and I'll try and put a link around here or in the description too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.